So I'm going to start off by talking about the types of harps that there are. So what are the different kinds of types of harps that you might come across? Well, there are many, the answer is many, many, many. And in front of you, I've got here today. <laughs> I've got a Celtic harp. You can call this a Celtic harp. You can call it a Klasach. You can call it a lever harp. I suspect you can call it many other things. But this is a harp that this particular instrument has 34 strings on it. And that is kind of a standard size for a Celtic harp. You get some that are 36 strings, 38 strings. You sometimes get them as um, down to sort of 27 strings. But 34 is quite a standard size for a Celtic harp. And the reason you can call it a lever harp is because at the top, this particular one has levers. And those do something very special. If I play on a red string, that was my red string there, my C string, for those of you in the know, and I lift it up, I get a semitone higher, and then it comes back down. So I get two notes on one string. And this is really, really useful to know if you ever decide to play the harp. But it's also just fascinating because basically, if a harpist is playing in one key and they want to go into a different key, you then would have to change your levers so that you would set, for instance, if I wanted to go into, let's go up to, let's go into G. Let's go to G. Um, I would put all my blue levers up, which are my F sharps, um, which give me F sharps. And that puts me into G major. So I'm, I'm not wanting to bombard you with information like that because that's quite far down the road for un levels of understanding. But basically, piano-wise, even if you um, have only ever looked at a piano, um, the black notes on the piano give you different pitches. They give you the, the sharps and flats. And my levers allow on this harp allow me to create sharps and flats. I can go more into those later if you're interested. But basically, they allow two different sounds per string. There are many, so this was the Celtic harp. There are many other types of harp. One of them is a lap harp or a knee harp. So this is a little, I bought just a little one of my little ones out to show you. So this particular lap harp or knee harp has 17 strings on it. It's a lap harp or a knee harp. I'm sure you can guess where you put that harp. Again, I think there are um, other names that you may hear them by, but these are the most common. Um, and this one has 17 strings. What you will notice about my particular one is that along the top here, where well, these pegs are, which are actually the tuning pegs and they're also where the strings are attached, they're bridge pins as well, well they're pins where the strings are attached, there are no levers, okay? So if I play a red string on this one, I get one sound per string. There's no nothing I can do to change that. So this harp exists in one key. The, all the notes that are available to me are literally the strings that are there. You can get lap and knee harps with levers as well, and they do give you the sharps and flats. Um, but this particular one doesn't. The reason I like this is because often for people who are starting the harp, if they don't want to go straight down the route of buying something like a Celtic harp with 34 or you know 27 plus strings on, then buying a knee harp or a lap harp can be quite a good in because it's not so expensive. I have to say everybody I know that has ever done this has always ended up then buying a different type of harp, but it can just help you get started. And if you go for one with levers, you often find there are loads of cheap, um, inexpensive, I should say, they're not cheap, inexpensive harps on the market that have levers that are, don't necessarily give you a true semitone. They don't necessarily tune so beautifully as, as some um, types of harps. And so if you go for one that has no levers on it, you don't have that issue. So all you've got is you've got the natural, beautiful strings. You can enjoy making a beautiful sound. I didn't tune this one before I began, but you can hear. Um, tune on on one of these harps that hasn't got levers but on lap harps and knee harps you can have harps with levers and so you can get those extra notes those sharps and flats the black notes on the piano if you so wish if you can if you want to stretch to spending that money as well 
There's also the pedal harp. Now, I've tried to get a pedal harp into this picture for you, and it's just not realistic. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to screen share and show you a picture of a pedal harp on my website because I just can't, I couldn't get enough of a harp in to show you that was helpful. So I'm going to screen share now, and hopefully you'll see this. Perhaps you could give me, kindly give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen now. That would be really, really helpful, at least um, if one person was willing to give me a thumbs up just so that I know. Can you see my screen? Okay, brilliant. So um, I'm just going to show you then. So this is a, actually it's not a full picture of pedal harp. On my homepage, you can see, thank you, Diane. You can see a full size pedal harp there. If I go into about, actually there'll be as better photos here. Um, so there's, this, is a, this is a very sort of, you know, um, harp um, shot of the full harp so that's that's a full size pedal harp so you can see they're really very um it's making look tall I was standing on a rock I have to tell you that for anyone who knows me I'm not that tall um they're usually over six foot tall these harps and just at the bottom if you can see where I'm hovering my mouse right now um there are there's one pedal there there are actually seven pedals around the back of these great big harps that are called pedal harps concert harps um, and those seven pedals are one for every note of the musical scale, because obviously we have, I'm sure many of you know, and if you don't, don't worry, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. So you have seven different pitches in the musical scale, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And so what those are, uh, yes, it's it's really not very clear on this, I realise. Um, I will open up a picture, another picture for you in a moment. Where I'm circling, that's where the pedals are. Um, and those seven pedals actually give you, as I say, the seven notes of the musical scale, and they allow you to get three sounds per string. So on my lever harp, I got that la and then la, but on the pedal harp, you would get la, la, la. You get three different pitches. You get a sharp and a natural and a flat. Don't worry if this is like, like phew. it's just interesting to know that you can get three sounds on one string. And for those of you who are familiar with keys and things, you can be like, ah, oh, OK, so a harp can be like in C major. And then the harpist would use their feet to change the key to go into different keys. Let me find you a better picture of some uh, of, of, of pedals, because I believe I put it at the bottom of this. Um, because somebody just said they couldn't see the pedals. No, it's not at the bottom of that. Okay, let's see if there's a better one here. And if not, I will find you something. Those are all the links I'm going to share with you in a minute. Mm. You can see them on this video here, just at the bottom here. I will find a back of the heart picture to share with whoever it is that's interested so that you can see a closer up. In fact, I'll take a photograph and send it to you. So if you're interested and want to see closer, then let me know. But for now, I'm going to stop screen sharing and carry on. So um, I've just talked about the Celtic harp and I've talked about the lap harp or the knee harp and I've talked about the pedal harp or concert harp or performance harp or orchestral harp. It can be called all those things. And um, what are they used for? The different types of harps. There is you can kind of play all music on all of them, arguably. All of us, all harpists would kind of many harpists would argue that. And then some would say definitely not. But in general, um, the Celtic harp you hear playing Celtic music or traditional music. And then, yes, I'm going to go on to the other types of harp. Thank you, whoever's just mentioned that. Um, so with the Celtic harp, you can play traditional music um, and Celtic music um, and lots of things like that. People often sing with a Celtic harp or a lap harp, the knee harp um, themselves. You see them played in bands. You see all sorts of things like that. With the orchestral harp, with the big concert one, the massive harp, that's the harp that goes into orchestra. The main reason that most, well, that traditionally, of course, these days, all types of harps have made it into the front of the orchestra, which is fantastic, even electric ones. But the traditional instrument to go into the orchestra that went in originally was the concert pedal harp. And the reason for that is because it has these three pedals. It allows to be fully, it allows us to be fully chromatic. So it means we can play every single note that a violinist can play. Although I could start arguing differently about that as well if I went into tuning. But in theory, you can play all the same notes as a violinist. And so it allows the composers, it allowed the composers to write for the harp as if it was a piano, which is challenging itself, but that's why that's like that. Um, so pedal harps, often the harps you see played 
when they're accompanying a singer um, who's if they're singing classically in, in the broad terms of classical or if they are playing with a flute and most of the flute and harp repertoire again is written for pedal harp there are many people breaking these molds all the time I'm kind of generalizing to give you this overview for the harp curious those of you in the know will know sort of deeper than that um, lap harps knee harps you find storytellers using them you find singers using them you find them being used for beginner workshops um, and then then there are slightly more unusual harps and perhaps I shouldn't say they're unusual but they're perhaps they're ones that we don't find as much and one of them is that you can there, there are wire strung harps which um, have a very different tone I'm going to talk about strings in a minute but they these are traditionally Irish harps and so they have a really different tone to them really really different tone they still come in in different sizes you could get you can get a knee harp lap harp one or a, or a big instrument that sits on the floor it may not um, have levers on it actually I'm not 100% sure it's not my not my um uh, my sort of uh, understanding of knowledge that I've only ever played on a knee harp one um but they they just have this really different tone and you play with them differently on all the harps I've just talked about we play with the soft fleshy parts of our fingers the pads of our fingers for the wire strung harp you actually play with your nails there's also in Wales, where I am now, the triple strung harp, which is a very exciting beast. Um, instead of this harp has a row of strings. Going along, going straight up, um, with the low sounds at the bottom and the high sounds at the top. Now, the triple strung harp, rather than this row that I've got here, I have a row of strings, don't I? I'd like you to imagine for a moment that my fingers here are another row of strings and that my fingers here are another row of strings. Now the word triple harp starts to make sense. It's a harp that there are three triple row of strings. There's three sets of three rows of strings on it. And this was one, this is one way of solving the conundrum of trying to get a harp to be fully chromatic because on the outside of a harp, broadly speaking, again, it can be tuned in many ways, but you can tune it so that the outside two rows of the harp are in C major, so they're like the white notes of the piano. And then the inside of the row is staggered, so it's kind of at an angle, so you can hook your fingers through, and those give you the semitones. So they give you your black notes of the piano, and they give you your sharps and flats. So that is how a triple harp works. And as I say, this the concert pedal harp was designed with these fascinating network of Pedals connected to rods that go up through the pillar, that go across the top along the mechanism and turn all these cogs. And it's incredibly intricate, thousands of pieces to make these pedal harps. And then the triple harp is kind of like, OK, we'll just get three rows of strings and tune them differently. And it's another great solution to having it, um, you know, having the full, full chromaticism available to yourself when you're playing. There are even more types of harps and there are some really, really extreme ones, you know, I'm not extreme, ones that are, we don't really see much in the UK, ones where you can um, pitch bend them. There's the koto, which is, is very different from a, from a harp, from this sort of harp. There, there are many, many other types of harps I could go into, but, but those are the, these, the three that I've mentioned, and then the wire strung and the triple are the most, the ones that we generally see in the UK. Um, I've got 13 here, people here live at the moment, so those of you who are here live, I'm just curious, um, which harp do you think of as being as being a harp out of the ones I've just shown you? Um, is it, you know, do you always think of a Celtic harp? Is it this kind of instrument you think of as being a harp or the pedal harp, the concert harp? Um, or the lap harp, which one do you think of as the harp? Because sometimes I find that people really are very key, you know, very familiar with one and go, oh gosh, there are many other types. So, okay, brilliant. So Diana's familiar with the Celtic 34. A. Williams, you're familiar with the Celtic. Brilliant. Oh, you're, some of you are my, messaging privately to me. You can change it so you send to all um, if you want to. It's not compulsory, but um, yeah, brilliant. And Mary, if you don't want me to read out your answers, just say private if you like. That would be really interesting. Um, and Mary, says she thinks of the pedal harp so yeah I mean I think when I was growing up learning the harp I thought that the pedal harp was because it was you know I was aiming to play an orchestra at that point um I think I thought that was the harp I was aiming for and I've ended up playing on an electric harp that you wear as my main harp which is the one um, harp type I haven't mentioned so the electric harp I should just screen share and show you that harp in case you've never seen it um this is my my harp that I'm so passionate about playing most of the time if you've not seen an electric harp they are they sound they sound like a harp but they are 
somewhat different in the way that they look and the, the big thing is is that you can play them you can use all the different effects pedals that an electric harp would have so let me let me uh, sorry electric guitar would have so this is the harp here this this one that you wear on the harness and um, you can make it incredibly loud and you can use it for playing with big bands you know there's one harpist who's used it to play with a i think it's like 47 piece a 47 piece swing band for instance uh, and it can be used for many different ways Brilliant. Okay, so that was me talking about the different types of harps. I hope that was interesting for those of you who were here live. I'd now love to talk to you about strings. So, what are the different types of strings that you might find on a harp? Well, there are three main ones that you see on most types of harps. There is nylon strings, there are carbon fiber strings, and there are gut strings. I have also mentioned wire strings as well. So there are, those are the four types, but the three, those are the ones that you generally find mostly around in the, certainly in the UK. If you went over to the island part of the UK, you may find, I guess, many more wire strung harps. So what, are, what's the, what is the difference and why? Well, the gut strings are the strings that sort of, are, well, generally always put on pedal harps. You can find ones with different types on, but generally because they have, they have this warmer tone, they were the traditional sort of string um, that you might have might find of you know that you would have found until very, quite recently in history really but there were strings of course before that there was horse hair they used to um, get um, horse tail hair and um, twist it and then make a harp using that and that would be the string so it's not the only thing cow guts to use for strings but that is the one that we sort of talk think of as being the traditional material then, um, so that has a really warm sound. The pros of the of playing on the gut strings really is that they make a beautiful tone. They're quite soft. They move under your fingers nicely, um, but they tend to have quite a high tension. So when I say soft, I mean the actual material is soft. But actually, playing on them, they have um, you, you actually need a really good squeeze technique to play really nicely on a gut string harp. Um, then there are nylon strings, which was kind of the next string type that got very well. That's been very very predominant on many harps. This type of string has a brighter sound. It's um, You can sort of tell if your harp's got one and they generally look clear, the strings, rather than sort of mottled, um, the gut ones look mottled. And as a bright sound, they basically almost never break a nylon string. I always, they always, when I hear a harp playing that has the nylon strings in it, I often think it sounds like Christmas because it just has this kind of bell, bright light tone. The string tension is much softer. So, you know, if um, I've met people, you know, people with arthritis and things in their hands that actually find that tension um, easier to play on. Um, also, it used to be a preferred string, I believe, this is through hearsay, that some of the Celtic players liked because for doing lots of the grace notes and triple triple notes and things like that it was easier to do it on those this has been kind of surpassed um for those guys for the professionals um playing in celtic sort of from, from my understanding again this is through word of mouth we chatting, chatting to other harvests they like the um, carbon fiber is one that is used a lot and the carbon fiber again doesn't break um you can tend to be able to tell a carbon fiber harp because it's not gut it's not really mottled it's not completely clear it's kind of um i don't know what you'd say opaque is that the right word that's makes that a good word i don't know I'm trying to think what a good describing word would be for it anyway that those types of strings are still soft on the hands but they have a warmer tone they're so, they, they just sit somewhere between gut and nylon and they don't break so that's actually the string that i've got on this harp um this celtic 34 string harp it's also the same that i have on my electric harp my pedal harps are cut and all my lap harps are nylon and that's because i use them for workshops so they're kind of indestructible then so <laughs> once nylon has tuned it tends to settle and stay forever which is a, which is a bonus so and then there's the as i say the wire strung harps i did have a wire strung harp for a while when i was younger and it was I remember I found I used to break the strings really easily. They have a very, they didn't have so much of a forgiving nature as all these other strings stretch and give more. I found that I broke a lot of wire strings when I was first learning to string that harp. Um, but they make a beautiful bell-like tone, so it's fantastic. So those are the harps and those are the string types. For those of you who are here live, I'm fascinated to know if there's anything you wish that I, else that I'd said about those strings um, or harp types before I move on. I'm just going to very quickly, while you're thinking about that, 
look at what people have said to me in between. And uh, basically, if you're happy, perhaps you could just give me a thumbs up if you're happy and don't have anything else to add. So let's have a look. There's some really interesting things here. Thank you for sharing. Brilliant. Okay, so you'd love to hear the electric harp, says Diana. Um, I can share you some videos and hopefully you'll get to hear one live one day. They are really the same but different. It's fascinating. I think it's a really exciting time for harps. Um, okay, brilliant. So Mary's asked me, what's the typical approach to harp instruction in the UK? So actually, I'm gonna next thing I'm going to talk about is why play the harp and then I'm going to talk about the different ways to learn. So I'll cover that there, Mary, if that's okay. If that's brilliant. And oh, Mary, I'm assuming you don't mind me sharing this. I said the arthritis in my hands has gone away since I started playing the harp. That is incredible. Uh, that really is incredible because it's well, that's absolutely brilliant news. That's a that's a reason to play the harp. If there was no other reason, and there's a thousand other reasons. Um, do any harps have a mixture of string types? Yes, they do. So you will find that very often a pedal harp. Actually, it's a string type I haven't mentioned. There's probably infinite things I could talk about today. But um, yeah, so on pedal harps, you often find that the top octave or so is what they call nile gut. So it's nylon and gut blend. It just because the top strings on a pedal harp usually break a lot because if they're gut string and the temperature changes or they've been played on a lot or the humidity changes, then they'll snap. Whereas if they've got a blend of nylon and gut, you've got that. Hopefully you've got a bit more of a warm of warmth of tone of the gut sound but you've got the durability of the nylon and actually I've taken something for granted which is really naughty of me is that most um most harps that have lower range of bass sound you know that in pitch lower sound like um I'm just I'm trying to keep this so that it's really open to everyone so if you think of a mooing cow a low sound um then um those lower sounds tend to be wire bound strings I didn't mention that either Okay, they're getting lots of thumbs up. Thank you very much. Um, brilliant. And people aren't going away, which is always a good sign. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next, the next question, which I want to cover. So this one, I wanted to next talk about why play the harp. Now, there are so many reasons. I did a webinar a while ago, which I will share the link with you now, actually. Um, it was called Be True to Your Harp. And this was kind of doing a bit of soul searching for the reasons why people might might play the harp so um, that's the link to the webinar so if you're interested in watching that then copy and paste that that was the be true to your harp webinar because there are so many reasons why you might play the harp you might as um we just had in this live chat we have just had mentioned it might be to uh, get rid of arthritis who knew so that's that's amazing but yeah why why might you play the harp well many reasons the biggest reason I suppose people come up with is that they love the sound of the instrument or that they think it looks wonderful or they heard somebody who inspired them to play or they'd always wanted to and they don't even know where that original inspiration came from. Um, but the inspiration will have obviously come from somewhere. Um, in the Be True to Your Heart, we talked a lot about the sort of the, the deeper reasons why you might learn. I mean, but broadly speaking i suppose we either we can we might be learning for ourselves so we might be learning because we want to we love the sound of it the beauty of it we want or we want the space i mean the time that you get you know with that instrument just you and listening to the sound because at the end of the day i mean i just can sit down and play a chord and kind of go you know, I mean, it really, the harp is, is wonderful for that. It, you know, just giving you you time, giving you your space. You might be playing it because you really want to play a particular tune. I've had people come for lessons who just said to me, you know, they saw, um, I don't know, the, one of the Marx Brothers playing a piece of music um, when they were young and that they'd always wanted to learn it. And that's their goal. Um, I've had people who, you know, seen somebody playing even in like Florence and the Machine, the band where there's the harpist who plays there, who saw the harpist in the band and wanted to do that, or wanted to went to see ballets when they were younger and heard the harp cadenzas in the Tchaikovsky Nutcracker or something, or you know went down the pub when they were young. Well, not when they were younger, but when they were <laughs> when they were old enough to the pub, obviously. Um, but saw a live, saw a session, saw a harpist playing with a session, or went to a Kaylee with a harpist. You know, it might just be literally just purely for you. You just deeply want to be able to play the instrument um it might be for brain improvement i've had quite a few people come to me who are older learners who have said that they have retired and that they really want to learn something that's going to we all you know read in the 
press, don't we, all the time that doing something that keeps up, that's new, that helps us be creating new you know, synapse stuff going on in our brains, um, new pathways to develop and things um, that we, you know, we're all told all the time that it's good for us to do something new. And so I've had people come to me for lessons saying that one of the reasons that they're doing it is to keep their mind active, to keep themselves learning something new. That's a, that's a really great reason too. It might be for, de um, for the, the, of it so it might be that you want to learn to play because you want to i've had people come to play want to learn to play because they want to, go to play with their grandchildren they want to go to storytelling with their grandchildren i've had people come and play, uh, learn to play because they want to play for storytelling in fact um professionally i've had somebody come and do the start half online course for that reason to be able to accompany themselves to that so then what you might want to do it to sing to you might want to play with a group so i've got quite a few people who've learned because they want to play with their church group or they want to play with a local harp ensemble or they want to play with an orchestra i've had har harpists that have gone on to university and things and that they're hoping to maybe be soloists or play an orchestra there are many different ways you can share your harp other than that as well I've had lots of people who want to do it because they want to share in their care settings we're often hearing again if you if you search out these things which obviously being a harpist to do you hear that you know harp has been found to help with pain relief and help people get better faster you know there are all these incredible studies done so there's lots of really good reasons for playing the harp um, I mean for me it's not a really exciting story why why did I play the harp apparently when I was three I saw it on Blue Peter I saw a harpist on Blue Peter and I desperately apparently wanted to play and didn't well my parents didn't know how on earth that would be possible I think um, they, they said to me if I learned the piano very diligently that when I was 11 that they'd take me to find a harpist to teach me when I went to secondary school and I was just oh so lucky because we bumped into well we bumped into a harpist we went to uh, somewhere where there was a harpist and she let me try her harp and then I had this moment where I got to touch her strings and she let me and I've always all my life wanted to be like my teacher and you know my first teacher and just try and engage as many people in our instrument whether it's to play or whether it's to just listen to it or just be passionate about it because it's that moment you know for me touching those strings the magical moment of making that first connection and I played a tune I've been learning, learning on the piano and she said she'd teach me and it was just just wonderful so there are many reasons why people might come to the harp I'm um, if anyone wants to share why they have come to the harp and what their reason is then please do I teach a harp ensemble in Cardiff, or three harp ensembles, but they're all under the same umbrella of dynamic harps. And I think that we all enjoy meeting together. As one of one of the reasons we all enjoy playing the harp partly is because we enjoy meeting together and connecting with other people who have the same passion as us. That's a wonderful thing about it. On Start Harp Online, the same thing. We have a community really of people all around the world, and we all sh can share things that we are interested in. You know, the Facebook page. I'll find. I'll go on and I'll find that somebody's posted an uh, a article they found or somebody's web or something like that and then everyone gets excited about trying what it said and things and it's that's that's lovely as well sort of being part of this sort of um different little world away from your busy everyday lives you know um whatever um, else we do in our lives it's it sort of gives us this little space as well so there we are i've dabbled a lot about that um i'd love to hear if anyone live wants to share why they why they learn the harp but i think those are some of the main main reasons that i've come across in my teaching days. I'm sure I've missed something really important. I'm looking at my list and there's a word that I can't actually work out what I've said. So that's not very helpful, is it? But there we are. <clears throat> Watch Be True to Your Harp, because I did a whole webinar on talking about why you might play the harp. Um, and I went into sort of a lot more deeper and emotional reasons why. Okay, brilliant. So um, what are the ways to learn? So I think, was it Mary? Somebody asked me a minute ago. Yes, Mary, um, what is the typical approach in the UK to teaching harp? So Mary, I'm just trying to work out where you're from. <laughs> Did you tell me where you were from, Mary? I'm just curious. Oh yes, North Carolina. Ah, I've been to North Carolina. Did we meet? I'm curious. I went to an amazing harp festival there once. Um, okay, brilliant. So I'm just gone thinking about that amazing harp festival now. Anyway, so back to ways to learn the harp. So what are the ways you can learn the harp? There are many ways you can learn the harp. And in the UK, there is, I think, a pretty standard way, certainly in the two countries, two parts of the UK that I've lived in for learning. And in general, the approach is that we find a harp teacher, we find a harp, 
and we have harp lessons. And so, you know, if you're a child, you might go weekly or you might go, if you were lucky enough to live near enough a harpist, um, you might go weekly or you might have a harpist come into school in Wales, believe it or not. We have in schools, in, in Welsh schools, certainly in Wales, um, harp teachers actually go into schools, which is not the same in England. Um, and I'm, I, I think in Scotland they, they manage it and I suspect they do in Ireland too. But yeah, so you um, you would have your lesson, your weekly lesson, and there are exams actually that we get done in the UK. So there are lots of different company, um, companies, they are companies, aren't they? There are lots of different examination boards that you can go to so um, to do grades. And we have grades one to eight. So there's the ABRSM, there's Trinity. Um, there are other ways you can take exams too. And so for often for children, that's the way that they're funneled, certainly in England and Wales. In general, there are many harp teachers out there doing lots of different things. And that is, it's all brilliant. Basically, all roads lead to Rome. Um, and so there's just, just talking about one approach. But if you go through the exam route, then yeah, you'd have, probably have your weekly lessons, you know, to play your pieces, you know, to play your scales. Um, and you do it that way. Um, then um, the adults that have come to me, generally we um you know i will um personally take them through a sort of uh, find out what they're looking for and teach them one to one to help them through their their particular learning goals and i've just talked about the reasons why people might want to learn so if somebody comes to me wanting to play to tell stories to their grandchildren thinking of one particular lady i wouldn't start teaching her orchestral aiming to teach her how to play orchestral excerpts you know and learning how to that sort of thing but if, so, if somebody's come to me and said I want to play in my local orchestra then I would obviously teach them that and um, so there's that there's that approach and Mary who is live um, and this this because this video is coming from part of a webinar this um, has asked what are these exams design sorry who does these exams and designs the curriculum with grades so this um, the associated board ABRSM is to, um, they're, they're all based with the music colleges originally. I don't know um, loads about it, but the um, for how they how they originated. I do know harpists who are on the boards now, but they basically was for however long it's been going on. There is literally a syllabus which has set pieces in it. So there's you get three pieces that you choose, and they um, a group of musicians and harpists get to, sorry, I shouldn't say musicians and harpists musicians including harpists have got together and have decided on the repertoire that should go in that they feel staggers up the grades and goes up in levels and the thing is is that we all have such differing opinions as harpists and musicians and you can sometimes think you look at it and you think well I've got a student who could do that already and then and, and another student might find it really hard and it's, it's actually it is it's a very challenging thing but moving away from talking about the exams and grades there are many other ways that people learn as I say so you can be self you can be guided by tuition books with a teacher so sometimes a teacher will find you a, a harp method you'll follow it together um, or you might have a teacher who actually you know who, who maybe gives you particular pieces each week that they think are suitable for your learning needs there are many teachers that teach exclusively um, by ear so they're um, passing down the oral tradition of playing and I can think of a couple of friends who do it all that way. And that kind of creates um, a, a sort of you, you you then create this sort of whole memory of pieces um, that you've got. Um, and so lots of people learn to either either read or they learn to play by ear. And then you can, might learn to improvise quite often. Um, there are a lot of harpists that I know that have gone down the route. They've learned one way and then they've gone and learned like jazz improvisation after they've learned to play perhaps down the classical route or perhaps down the folk route. So there are there are many different sort of ways you can learn if you're learning one to one. Other ways people learn, there are there's learning as part of a group. So in the UK, there are things like the Classic Society, which is an amazing society that has um, different groups all around the UK that meet depending on the branch you have different they're called branches um, and they, it depends how active they are. Some meet all the time, some meet might meet once a month or once year even perhaps but um, some branches are more active than others. And so they meet together and we'll have a tutor and we'll learn pieces together. There are people that run ensembles like I do, where we all meet together. I'm not so much teaching them people to progress in a kind of way, as in I'm not sort of going, right, here is what you're going to do this week and you're going to go home and do this and this and this. When I'm teaching ensembles, and I, I think many ensembles are like this, I'm, you're learning pieces that you can all play together. Um, but of course, by attending a weekly session together as an ensemble, you're inspired by the people that um, you know are playing, the other people that are playing other parts to you. You get to chat to each other about the different kind of music that is available. Um, you get to 
get it improves rhythm like nothing else um playing in a group so if if you if you anybody's learning the harp already and learning one-to-one -one, i implore you to go and join a group doesn't matter whether it's a mixed group instruments or just harp it really really helps like nothing else um to really get you to play with flow and things working in a group um so what i'm trying to say is that even if you're not going into structured lessons weekly as a group if you're going into ensemble playing as a group you'll find that it does help you progress as well usually that's in addition for most people i think to other other ways of learning too um so those i mean really that the most typical way of learning is one-to-one -one. and then we have things like wonderful heart festivals and heart weekends and heart events that people go to where you meet up and everyone shares ideas and you might you know attend a festival and be inspired by concert and then go and take a workshop with the tutor or whatever it might be and then there's the learning online route which is obviously something quite new ish um, and obviously it's been building over the, the past sort of few years since the internet has got so well since we all just have the internet all the time on phones and computers and things lots of people do anyway um, and so there are there are various different online ways of learning there's free videos on YouTube there are courses like my own where you subscribe for maybe a term or for a year and you learn on a weekly schedule lessons. People, of course, also learn via Skype where they still have their one to one lessons, but it's via Skype. But these online courses like the one that I run is one which has a curriculum that I've created um, that guides people through from being um, never touching a harp for the first course to being able to play pieces. And then the level two takes people higher and level three kind of goes into things like um, a gliss. Um, what does Glissandos is, is level one? Um, things like thumb slides and harmonics and playing with sort of um, in um, deeper techniques and doing dominant seventh flourishes and things. Um, level three goes quite, quite a long way um, down the route of, of learning. Uh, so that's kind of a structured way of doing doing it online. The thing with the start harp that I did was that I really wanted I really wanted to teach people to play by ear and to play from music and to improvise all at the same time because I feel I went down a classical route and I learned to read music and I popped out the other end of my training expecting to play professionally and kind of was like oh but I don't really play by ear and oh I don't really improvise and then. Um, have learned to do so since and kind of had my epiphany and do all sorts of different things now and so I just uh, I really want to kind of um, funnel people to know all these different strands of playing because I think they so inform each other you know if you can learn to play by um, from the music but you can play by ear it means if you lose your place in the music your ear will tell you where to go and if you get if you go wrong then you can improvise your way out of a piece you know out of a mistake as it were so you know even the, all these things in, inspire and inform one another so you know if you if you're someone who plays by ear all the time you might one day decide you want to learn to read music because it just means that you've got that ability of sitting down with other people um, and, and going here's a piece of music you've never heard before and you can all play it together straight away that's magical but it's also magical to be able to sit down in a room and go let's play summertime in the key of a minor and everyone just to start it that's also incredible um so um at, or let's play an improvisation in the key of f um you know uh, these these three different ways, you know, I, I used to go into a room of musicians and think, I um, I want to join in, but they're speaking a different language to me, and and these three different ways do enable you to join in with kind of every every kind of eventuality, every kind of place you might find yourself in playing. Um, you know, once you're uh, playing, if you don't already, if you decide to play one day. So that was ways to learn. So Mary, I hope I um, kind of answered your question about the um, curriculum and, and exams and grades so if you wanted to really look into it you could look at the trinity exams or the abrsm um, associated board of schools and royal schools of music royal school of music sorry <laughs> um then you can find out about that um karen says do i give lessons online i karen i give i have my harp school i have start harp now i'll talk about that a little bit at the end more but um just to give you some links and things but Yes, I do. I don't give Skype lessons. I don't do one-to-one -one lessons over the internet, but I, the Start Harp lessons, we have video homework submissions and feedbacks and um, online chats like this, uh, where we talk about things and look at techniques in depth together. So it, I do, yes, absolutely, I give lessons online, but I always say not, not Skype lessons because it's very different, isn't it, from giving a one-to-one -one lesson um just through the medium of the internet okay brilliant fantastic so um the, the next question i wanted to look at was looking after the heart this is another question i get asked you know um how do you look after a heart 
county look after your heart well really you know they don't need feeding or watering that's good isn't it you don't have to get up for them in the middle of the night they don't bark at you it's a little bit easier than having a cat or a dog but there are certain things you need to do looking after your heart but one of the main things is that you do need to learn to be able to tune a harp so when you buy a harp or you end up with a harp or harpists end up having something called a tuning key and the tuning key basically on the other side of the peg that you can see here you can attach the key so there's basically the peg goes right runs right through the harp um i wish it's it's difficult here in the space i've got i can't take it and show you but it's just it's just a piece of metal sticking out the other side you put the tuning key on can i put it somewhere you can at least see the key sticking out no not brilliant no you still can't see it anyway i've locked the key on but now if i play a note okay you can play a C. i can make it lower and higher so I can tune the string basically um, by I push the lower end of the key away from me when I want the pitch lower and I push I bring the lower uh, um, the, the bottom half of the key towards me if I want the pitch to go higher that's how I think of it so away for lower and towards me for higher to make the pitch change um, and so one of the biggest questions I get asked about that is how often do you you know um, have to tune the harp um, and do you do it can you do it yourself because obviously with a piano if anyone has ever seen a piano being tuned quite often you get a piano tuner and they still have something very like this actually to do it but very often we pay um you know you pay a piano tuner to come in and do it for you but as a harpist you learn to do it for yourself there are ways of cheating good to know about um so you can get electronic tuners so this one um literally if i play a note it doesn't work because <laughs> it helps if you turn it on okay <clears throat> There you go. So can you see um, just a little light lit up? And so it basically then tells you whether your note is correct or not. Um, and going a bit more into depth on that, it tells you whether it's sharp or flat. And it tells you how far by the way the needle is. And so you can then adjust your tuning with the key. I don't think it takes more than five to ten minutes to tune a harp. But um, to start with, it does take some time to get used to the amount of turn that you have to give to make a, you know, if you hear a note really out of tune when you've been doing it for ages, you kind of go, oh, OK, I need to do that much turning um, or it's only a bit out and you go, OK, just that much. Whereas when you first start tuning a harp, you kind of have no idea and it's a bit all over the shop. But it gets you get faster at it really quickly. Like I mentioned about the wire string harp, strong harp and me breaking loads of strings on it to start with. Um, that these don't give as much. It's very tiny turns, but you get used to your instrument. Um, so, yeah, I get asked about strings with looking after tuning the strings and then changing strings. Again, you do that for yourself if you play the harp. You basically have at the at the back of the harp, you have um, a little anchor, which is just either a little piece of string or a little piece of wood at the back. I should have got one of those to show you, I realise, but there we are. Um, can you see it in this one? I'll see if I can see it in this one. <laughs> No, you can see a black hole. <laughs> oh, I didn't think that through, did I? If the lighting isn't good enough, you'd see. Anyway, basically, if you imagine, this is the heart with the strings. If you imagine a little piece of string cut off, you tie your main string to a little piece of string cut off um, with a special knot. And there are several different ways of doing the knot. If you have a harp or if you are thinking of getting a harp um if you have a harp you're probably already good at doing them but if you're not then you know basically just get someone to show you and get and do it with them a few times it doesn't have to be difficult uh, you know i often meet people who are a bit afraid of of doing their own harp strings and really you know if you just practice a few times with a piece of string on a pencil and then practice on a broken string a few times and then do it for real you it it isn't so bad the worst thing is is that if you've got a nylon or a carbon strung harp where they don't break very often you might only do one string like every two years and then there's been a massive gap so perhaps you know we should all think in our practice sessions if you're still feeling a little bit string tying shy and you play already then you might think okay well perhaps you know once a month I'll make myself tie a string or once a week I'll in my practice time I'll just do a quick string tie practice so that's that's um an idea too that perhaps you might want to think of um temperature is is important harps like to be at a regular temperature i mean harps exist all around the world so they must put up with different temperatures but they do hate changing temperature so, for instance, I once took a harp out in the snow. I knew it was an idiot thing to do. I really, really wanted to experience playing out in the snow. And my poor harp really just went, Ooh. never, ever put a harp in the snow, ever. 
<laughs> As I say, I did know I was being an idiot. And it, um, anyway, so um, and the same thing goes for heat. You know, when you're playing for weddings and the sun's beating down on your instrument, you know it's a dreadful idea and your harp's going to ask you. And so we tend to try and protect the harps by keeping them in the shade if you're playing outside. And then there's humidity as well. You know, um, again, changes in humidity will make strings um, go out of tune um, and strings break. And if you think basically you've got this this wood, you know, and, and wood is kind of, you know, a, a movable thing isn't it so you know if the wood if wood gets wet or um warm or cold it, it shrinks and expands contracts and then if you think you've also got metal particularly in a pedal harp that expands and contracts and whatever in in um differently or stays more rock solid for longer whatever whatever you want to look at it um that puts a lot of strain doesn't it on things and then the tension of the strings is immense on the the soundboard as well so all those changes can be really quite damaging for a harp so basically we try and keep things really really um, as regular as we can that's the best thing you can do and the biggest thing I say is never put a harp in a window and never put a harp by a radiator so um, I, the number of people I've met who've gone oh a harp in a bay window doesn't that look beautiful and it's like no it will have loads of light on it and there's probably a radiator in the, underneath it as well so yeah just um, those are my two biggest things but if you live um, somewhere that's you know really hot or really cold seek advice from your local harp teachers and companies because I don't know because I live in a temperate country I don't know um, any more than that to tell you but there are quite good articles you can find online um okay tuning I've just talked about and I've talked about strings I've talked about temperature change talked about light traveling them you always tune a heart when you've traveled um because it will have gone out again the, the motion the movement of the car or the plane or the train or whatever you're in um will will set the heart out of tune so just be aware of that as well that's another heart curious question people often say to me oh do you have to tune it when did you tune it before you got here and um you know if people say to you that the heart will stay in in tune it's not necessarily not necessarily the, the case um so always tune your heart and um, when you get someone new um yes uh, um yes okay brilliant so fantastic so um how to get a harp you can get harps new you can get harp second hand you can get them online you can get them in shops you can get them at harp festivals it can be really hard depending on where you live around the world to do what i'm next going to tell you which is i would say always go and try your instrument if you possibly can before you buy it if you can't, try and send somebody in the know, so somebody who plays the harp at the very least, or a harp teacher if possible, or a harp maker, you know, to go and look at, at an instrument before you buy it. Because, you know, there, there's only so, there's not so much, you know, you can't hear an instrument over the internet. You can't, you can't check for buzzes. You can't, you can't find out. You look for cracks in the same way, anything like that. So, yeah, if you possibly can, go and try one. If you possibly can, go and try lots in the same place, which does basically mean that harp festival or event. Um, if you are looking to buy a harp for the very first time, read about them, seek advice, talk to teachers, talk to other harpists. We often, you know, we're, we're geeky about our harps. We love talking. I love talking about harps. I'll talk to anyone about harps that will listen to me. So, you know, if you, we won't mind being asked um, and we all want everyone to be able to play and enjoy that harp as much as possible. Um, you know, go to a reputable maker um, is, is the biggest thing. And that's such an annoying phrase if you aren't in the know already. So if you're just harp curious, you're like, well, who's a reputable maker? Um, again, you know, talk to harpists that you can find um, and find out, you know, who they play, who they recommend. Be really, really wary of going online and going on to eBay or um, well, eBay is the worst place, I think, for doing this or Amazon and things like that and buying a inexpensive harp because it probably isn't inexpensive. It's probably either bad <laughs> as in the, the things that are bad about them often are that they don't tune properly. They don't stay in tune or the soundboards go boom, um, crack and, and can break. I'm looking down at the harp that I've shown you already. The harp I've shown you already is really badly thought of, but I have got one without levers on it. The, the lap harp, sorry, that I've shown you. Um, I've got one without levers and it's the levers that don't tune particularly um, on some of these harps. Um, but so I actually really rate these as beginner hands-on trying instruments they're in C there's nothing that can go wrong the strings don't break and as I say anyone who's ever started on one of these instruments ends up pretty quickly going on to a 34 or more string harp anyway so it just but it can be a way in because you know who has really um, you know not many people around the world have the ability to go yeah I think I want to try the harp yeah okay I'll just go and spend a thousand pounds plus on an instrument um I'm in America I'm in UK so that's in um, British sterling I'm talking but you know um or two thousand pounds plus whatever it might be 
So if you can find, you know, if you do think, OK, I'm just going to try on an inexpensive instrument, just talk to somebody, talk to a harp teacher first, because they will probably have somewhere that they can recommend that they feel is is appropriate for you to buy that from. Um, what else was I going to say? Um, I remember somebody telling me ages ago, somebody said to me, always buy the most expensive instrument that you can. Um, and that's so, you know, think just think on that, you know, buy always buy the most expensive instrument that you can. And then you're always giving, you know, if it's for a child or for you, you're giving that person the best experience because you're going to get and not expensive, obviously, as far as I've said expensive, the best I should say, and that, that might not be necessarily the most expensive, but it was advice someone else gave to me and um it always stuck in my head as, you know, kind of okay, so whatever I can afford right now. I should try and get myself the best because that will inspire me the most to play and enjoy this instrument. Um, if you're going secondhand, just, you know, think, find out when it was last serviced, when it was last played. Has it had new strings recently? Because if it's had new strings recently, um, loads of new strings recently, then they won't stay in. And, you, you know, you want to check for cracks and all that kind of stuff. What's the age of the harp? All those sorts of things are important to ask. Um, and there's there's then there's ways in, you know, there are there are ways in instead of just going and buying one. You'll often find that a harp teacher, if you go to them, will let you have um, borrow a harp for the first few weeks from them just to, to try um, try it out. Or that really depends actually on your harp teacher. Um, you'll find that harp teachers might rent you one of their own instruments. You'll find that a lot of the big harp companies will rent you instruments. Um, you will find um, that there are some charities that might help you buy instruments. I've had some people who've been able to get some assistance in, in purchasing um there's in the uk they used to i think it's actually phased out in wales but there used to be a system where you could buy through your school um and to not and not pay tax on the instrument not pay that that yeah on the instrument um so there are there are lots of different you know lots of ways in that you can look to and but basically i'd say go and try and get your fingers on one first if you think about it go and try and do a hands-on harps workshop somewhere or find somebody that will let you try it like my very first moment when that wonderful lady Aldith smith said yes you can touch harp and this little nine-year-old went up trembling and tried the harp it was amazing for me um okay fine um i'm moving through because i i want to open up to questions and i realize i've nearly done the hour but um i'm happy to stay longer if anyone wants to who could you play the harp with i think i've covered this rather soon already but um you know sometimes people say to me um oh the harp's a dying instrument um, you don't hear it played much, do you? Or and things like that. That's something I often have said to me by the harp curious. And so I would say, well, that's not true, actually. You know, you meet the harp in so many different, different places. You see the harp in orchestra. You see the harp accompanying. You see the harp. Sometimes you see a harp in a period drama, even you, you know, on television. You might see it. You see the harp at weddings. You see the harp used for background and events. You see the harp playing with flute and harp. You hear the harp in it's still in orchestra, but you hear it with the other than the opera a lot as well. You um, hear people accompanying singers. You hear it in Cayley bands. You hear it in folk bands, Celtic bands, pop bands, um, soloists, obviously. Um, and all those different types of harps, you know, the electric harp, you hear it in jazz, you hear it, uh, you know, there are, it's kind of, you know, it's whatever, whatever floats your, you hear rock harp, it's whatever floats your boat, whatever genre of music you love, if you've got a harp, you can play it if you want to, you know, there'll be someone out there that will help you as well. Because there is, it's just this incredible, incredible instrument that is so diverse, so beautiful, so um, I don't know there's something extra there's an extra layer about the harp it's it's a yearning you I feel that everyone I meet that plays the harp has a deeper thing it's not just I wanted to play that it's like I I really want to play the harp it's like it's almost an ache you often find with people and then you find people who never wanted to play the harp and you accidentally got into it there are people like that um, and they love it too in the end of course too so I've really br broadly gone over a load of things. Those are all the things I wanted to cover. Um, and I also wanted to, um, I'm going to ask, open up for questions now. I also wanted to share just a few things with you guys while I remember to. So I'm going to put some links in here. I wanted to share with you my hot, First Steps in Harp Technique poster. So if you want to download it while you're, thinking, while you're typing in any questions or anyone's typing in any questions, um, do type in here. Um, sorry, do click on this link and you'll, you can download a free poster from my website. Even if you're only harp curious, you know, it will just remind you of today. A uh, little, little poster that tells you uh, basically about a little bit about strings, about how to hold your hands and some basic technique ideas. There's also, I've already shared the Be True to Your Heart webinar. 
um, basically, if I also in a moment going to talk about Start Harp very briefly, but there are a couple of things. If you are interested in learning online with Start Harp, there is a quiz you can go and do. So I've just posted that quiz where you can go and find out about my online courses, the three different levels that I have that teach you completely from scratch right through to being able to play really, really very fluently and properly on the instrument, kind of um, grade four level at least grades but I'm talking about being able to play with all four hands to be able to do turns to be able to do quite um, tricky technique to be able to play really beautiful pieces of music um, I, the people I've had that have gone through it I've been astounded by so it really it really works but um, if you want to try a quiz and find out what level um, I would recommend you start at you can have it there and if you're interested about Start Harp there's also a webinar which I've just posted the link for there um, the third link I've just put in which has a webinar about um, where Deborah Henson Conant, some of you may know her, I hope you do. If you haven't, go and Google her, she's fantastic. Um, interviews me about Star Harp and we go inside the courses and look in more in depth. So if you are interested in learning and you can't find a teacher near to you, um, or you just have an erratic lifestyle, it means you can't go to lessons regularly, or you're a full time carer then um, check out Start Heart because it's that's the kind those are the kind of people that I'm teaching online. We're a wonderful group of very friendly people. I'm going to go through now and just check and see if anyone's had any questions. Um, I'm, I'm just going to speak to the people who are here again. So there's some people here without um, without their name. So welcome to those somebody who's dialed in. A stealth watch home. You might want to share your name with me. Four four zero three three nine. Whoever you are. Um, a Williams. Thank you for coming. Carolyn. Thank you for that coming Christine thank you for coming Daniela thank you for coming Diana Jill hello Jill um Joelle Karen Kelly Laura Mary hello Mary Mary Michelle Peggy hello um there's lots of people I know here thank you very much for coming so um the people who are here live if there's any questions I'm going to go through now and have a look at what you've typed while I've been talking that I might have missed so Diana said you'd like to hear the electric harp I will find you a link for that so let's just see if I can find you a link um, quickly where um, but you 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 actually if you while I remember Deborah Henson Conant is actually running a webinar tonight herself um, on it's it's on improvisation in fact so if you do play the harp already and you've not already signed up to her webinar go and have a look um, it's gonna be brilliant it's tonight um, so or this, or this afternoon it's later on it's in like an hour or so I will find you a link for that in a moment okay so for those of you who wanted to hear the electric harp there's a video of me playing an electric harp on this page um, so that was Diana thank you for that Mary I've answered your question already Mary you mentioned about the arthritis which is brilliant the fact that it's gone away since you started playing the harp um, do any harps have a mixture of string types A Williams I talked about that and then Mary, I've answered your one. Karen, I've mentioned about lessons online. Yes, I do. I do very structured lessons online, but I don't do one-to-one -one Skype lessons. Um, Mary, orchestral pitch for 40. Ah, yes. Yeah, so tuning, when you're tuning your harp, depending on which country you live in and things, there will be different pitches that you tune to. But in general, most countries tune to 440 or 441, and which is called orchestral pitch. Um, which, uh, sorry, which is called concert pitch. It's called concert pitch, 440, um, 441. But you'll find that actually people play up to 443 in different, in different places. It's interesting, isn't it? Um, Mary says hire a harp first if you can yes that's a really good piece of advice and Diana says thank you for sharing the information Carolyn says what are your thoughts about carbon fiber harps like the Kamak Ulysses okay well Carolyn um, I really want a Kamak Ulysses <laughs> I really really want one um, so I, I think I mean I think that's a brilliant harp because it sounds great and it's light and it's got their amazing levers on it. I can't, can't, and it's got a pickup in it. I can't think of any reason why I wouldn't want one if I could afford one. Um, so I really want one. Um, there are many different carbon fiber harps out there. The very first one that I tried didn't seem to have a very good tone at the top. They weren't really even in tone. But if you're amplifying them, you can always make that up. They're light. So if you have, you know, back. Um, you know, something. If you don't want to carry a heavy instrument in and out of a car, and you want to play out loads, I think they're an incredible idea. Absolutely brilliant. Um, the lovely thing about the Ulysses is that, that they have the wooden, they have wooden parts to them. So it has the wooden soundboard. So the wood is still giving you that natural resonance, which we all kind of, as harpists, if you've been playing for a long time, at least you have this sort of deep urge to have this kind of real wood resonance and then the rest of it's made of carbon fiber so it's really light but you've also got that the, the benefit of the, the soundboard being 
wood. But then, I mean, my electric harp is entirely carbon fiber uh, already and there's no wood on that at all but that's my electric instrument and that has that I want that for the electric sound anyway so yeah I, I love them. Mary says I had my very harp taster with you in the shop in Cardiff I love my harps I'm looking forward to restarting dynamic harps in January um brilliant okay thank you Mary um Mary says she has one too so uh, yeah uh Carolyn um Mary Carson sorry Mary I hope you don't mind saying your surname I'm sure you don't because you've typed in yes um has just said she's got one so if you wanted to talk to someone who actually has the real deal and plays on a Kamak Ulysses I suspect Mary wouldn't mind being put in touch with you um you both have my email and know me either on, from online or from in person so um just drop me an email if you're both willing for that to happen and i can i can connect you up that would be really lovely this is what i love about the heart world you can connect all around the world you can share we love this instrument and it's just fantastic we are so lucky to be um um you know if you're just heart curious and you've never touched an instrument you are just you know i'm glad that you've come to look and come to see and hopefully it's answered some of your curious questions um and um hopefully you can enjoy being part of the heart world through listening and through watching and all the different things you can do it really is a stunning instrument to be part of 